Okay, a few more formulas to add to the list here. Not a lot, though. We're going to look at the double and half angle formulas for sine and cosine, mainly. Uh, let's see. Uh, there, there's one for tangent, too, but we're not going to focus that much on it. Uh, it might come up on the homework, or your teacher might emphasize it more than I do. But for sine and cosine, you, you definitely need, need to know these. We, we derive these from the addition angle formulas. Sine of twice an angle is 2 times the sine of angle times the cosine of the angle. The cosine of twice an angle is, is the cosine square of the angle minus the sine square of the angle. And if you apply the Pythagorean theorem, if you replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, you get this one. And if you go back here and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared, you get this one. So these other two variations of the cosine double angle follow from this one and the Pythagorean theorem. Anyway, so let's look at some examples here. Uh, suppose I tell you the tangent of theta is negative 3 fifths and theta is in quadrant 2, and you want to find the sine of 2 theta and the cosine of 2 theta. Nice thing about these formulas for the double angle formulas is that you don't have to worry about the, the sign, whether it's positive or negative, because it takes care of itself. Draw a picture, of course. Um, we're in the second quadrant, so the, the y coordinate would have to be 3, the x coordinate would have to be negative 5, right? r becomes square root of 34, that's the hypotenuse. So this is, this is kind of nifty. Look, if the angle is in quadrant, um, if the angle is in quadrant uh, 2, it's between pi over 2 and pi, if you double everything, that says that double the angle would have to be between pi and 2 pi. That says twice the angle is either in the, either in the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant. Isn't that what that says? Interesting. It turns out you don't, don't have to worry about it because you're, the formulas take care of, of the sine. Anyway, so, so uh, you'd have to compute this, this, the sine of theta becomes negative 5 over r. Uh, I should say the sine of theta is, is 3 over r, right, which is 3 over square root of 34. The cosine of theta is, is x over r, which is negative 5 over radical 34. When you simplify that, you get uh, negative 15 over 17. Anyway, uh, cosine of twice the angle then. I'm going to use this version. Um, uh, the co is the cosine of twice the angle is the cosine squared of the angle minus the sine squared of the angle. So the, the cosine of the angle was um, negative 5 over square root of 34. You square that. And then the sine is 3 over square root of 34. You square that. You, you subtract the first minus the second. Notice you get positive 8 over 17 when you simplify everything. What does that tell you about 2 theta? What quadrant are you in, in fact? If the sine was negative and the cosine was positive, it turns out from the inf information given, it, it turns out that 2 theta, I was actually in quadrant 4, wasn't it? But what's nice is the formulas kind of take care of that for you. Okay, let's look at these uh, power reduction formulas. Th these are just the formulas for the um, uh, double angle formulas for cosine. Uh, two, two variations. If you solve this first one for cosine squared, you get this. And if you solve the second one for sine squared, you get this. What they say is if you have the cosine squared of something, you can write it where there's no expressions, uh, no, no trig functions being squared. The same is true with this. If you have the sine squared of something, you could write it as an expression where there's no trig functions being squared. You just have to double the angle, right? All right, so, so there, there's times in your calculus classes where you may have to do that. For example, and, and in, this, in this problem, we're going to express cosine to the fourth just in terms of cosine to the first power, okay? This is how you do it. Write as cosine squared squared. And then you can, you can apply the power reduction formula to the cosine squared on the inside, right? You, this is equal to cosine squared. Now we're going to multiply it out. When you square it, you multiply it and you get this. Now we're going to have to get rid of this squared also. And the way you do that is you apply the um, power reduction formula to cosine squared of 2x. See, the cosine squared of 2x, you get rid of the squared if you double the angle. So it, it, it becomes 1 plus cosine of 4x over 2. So you have to apply it twice. Anyway, when you carefully multiply everything out, uh, simplify, you get 3 eighths plus 1 half cosine 2x plus 1 eighth cosine 4x. Uh, so the power reduction formulas are really just the doubling of formulas that you've solved for the different expressions. Same is true with what are called the half angle formulas. These, these are the power reduction formulas we, we just talked about. If you uh, notice, this, this angle here is twice this one. Well, couldn't you also say that this angle here is half of this one? It's, it's the same idea. So instead of calling this x and 2x, let's call this theta over 2 and theta. Same is true here. This angle is twice this angle. Well, couldn't you also say this angle is half of this one? So let's we can write it like this. Again, it's the same formula. We're just 
making a substitution. Now the tricky thing here is when, when you solve for say cosine of theta over 2, if you want to find the cosine of half an angle, you have to know what quadrant you're in before you know if it's the positive or minus plus or minus root here. Same is true with the sine of half the angle. You have to know what, what quadrant you're in. So for example, look at this first one. What quadrant are we in? 5 pi over 8. Isn't that quadrant 2? So when you use these, this uh, half angle formula here for cosine, you're going to have to have a negative sign in front because this angle right here, 5 pi over 8, is in quadrant 2. In fact, uh, if half the angle is 5 pi over 8, then the whole angle would be 5 pi over 4, which is a known angle. That's important. You, the whole angle, the entire angle, theta, has to be one that we can compute easily. Otherwise, it's not worth it, is it? So anyway, you, could, you, you, you have the minus root, and you put uh, 1 plus cosine of the whole angle here. Now, cosine 5 pi over 4 turns out to be in quadrant uh, 3, so the cosine is negative radical 2 over 2. When you simplify that, you get a common denominator here and you uh, flip the bottom over, you get a 4 on the bottom, which becomes a 2, and notice the negative is still outside. So you get negative, the quantity, radical 2, minus radical 2 all over 2. Okay, let's put all that together here. Let's look at this one. Suppose you have the, I'm giving you the sine of theta is negative 2 thirds, and, and, and I'm giving you that theta is in, um, not only is theta in quadrant 4, but theta is between 3 pi over 2 and 2, two pi. So this is this is this is, a, this is an idea of what what the what it would look like. Uh, you, the sine of theta is negative two thirds. You, if you know the x coordinate is radical five, then you could find all the trig functions. So the first thing we're going to do here is find the um, sine of twice the angle. If if the, uh, if sine of the angle is negative two thirds, we want to find sine of two theta. Okay, so it's two sine theta cosine theta. Since we found x, we can compute cosine theta, right? Cosine theta becomes radical five over three. So the answer to the first question is sine 2 theta is negative 4 radical 5 over 9. We could also find cosine 2 theta since we know um, we know the sine of theta and cosine of theta. Since, since we're given the sine of theta is negative 2 thirds, why not just use this version of the cosine 2 theta? It's 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of theta. It doesn't make a difference which version you use. They all come out to be the same answer. They better. So you get um, you get uh, positive 1 9. So what quadrant are we in, by the way? 2 theta. Well, what quadrant? 2 theta, if you double the angle, you, 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 if theta is between here and here, then 2 theta is between 3 pi and 4 pi. Uh, but notice the sine's negative and the cosine's positive. We, we, we've just shown that actually 2 theta is actually in quadrant 4, isn't it? Okay, here's the hard part. We want to find the um, sine of half the angle. Now this is where you have to know whether, which square root to use, the positive or the negative one. Well, be careful on this one. If theta is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, when you divide everything by 2, you get this. What does that say? Theta over 2 is between 3 pi over 4 and pi, which means you're in quadrant 2. So what's the value of the sine? So, th so this angle, theta over 2, is in quadrant 2. The sine's positive, so that's how you know to use the positive square root, because you, you lo located the angle. Anyway, it's going to be the square, positive square root of 1 minus the cosine of theta over 2. When you simplify, you get square root of 3 minus square root of 5 over 6. Last one here. Uh, notice, since, since, since we deduce the, the angles in quadrant 2, when you find cosine of half the angle, you have to have a negative in front. It's 1 plus the cosine of the whole angle over 2. So when you simplify this, you get a common denominator. Divide by 2, that means you get a 6 underneath here. Make sure you keep the negative sign there. Negative the square root of 3 plus square root of 5 all over 6. Okay, we're done. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.